？没有啊，就我一个人呀。参会者一，参会者一个。开了，开了，开了，这是开了，这是开了，开了，哎，又有了一点，哎，刚刚就有，宝宝，你看这一滴，没有这滴了，只有十滴。能不能看到你？看不到，我们不识字。我还是知道。还没上课呀？就三分钟了嘞。不急呀。我已经把每一个节课背出来了。我们先看，快点打电话出来。好。
Sure, can ask for three. Monday, 20th was our last class. Hello, Natasha, one second. I cut off the air. So what did we learn in the last class? So we learned, uh, did we explore the scanner object in the last class? Do we put it? Um, did we look into uh, system.in? Okay, great. So I thought we have not done that yet. So which means we can go forward. So we also looked at print F, right? Correct. We also looked at print F formatting a um, function using format strings and argument lists. We looked at that, right? We already looked at this slide. Correct. So I think we have finished. We have finished this chop this slide. Have I sent this slide to you in your WeChat group?
Have I sent this slide to you, chapter three? Do you have this slide? Please respond when I ask so that I know what, where to continue. Have I sent this slide to you? Okay, you know what? I just send it again. Java to put the I mean, it's a nothing, Lord. Okay, you can check your WeChat, it's there. So we spoke a little bit about um, these Java objects, Java classes. Um, so in this class, we'll be looking a little bit in detail into what it is all about. Okay. Fifty slides. So I take twenty five today. Okay. So what do we understand by um, Can anyone tell me what uh, Java classes and Java objects is? What's the difference between a Java class and a Java object? So basically, let's not waste time. An object, for example, MIS, Two zero one zero three programming is a class, and all of you, one by one, are objects. Okay, of this class, Doris is an object, Jackie is an object, Jessica is an object. Okay, all of you are objects, and you are a member of MIS two zero one zero three class right so in this class there are many methods okay or many attributes or many behavior of this class mis1013 you must go to class and study you must do homework you must do lab you must do so these are attributes or methods or behavior of this class so every object can take a behavior or attribute from the class. You must behave in a way the class behave. You cannot behave other way from different class unless you call that behavior, all right? All right? So let us go into what this is about. So today we'll talk about classes, more about passing arguments, instances, fields, and method, constructors, okay? And so on. So classes in object or you create programs that are made up of objects. Okay, in software, an object has two capabilities. An object can store data, just like a variable. A variable is also an object, it can store data. For example, you see, when we, um, when we were doing exercise examples in the last class, in the last class, um, we, we, we called on a Java class, the scanner class, right? Scanner is a class. And in that scanner class, there are many, many methods in that scanner class. So when we create an object and we name the object, for example, um, keyboard. Keyboard is an object inside the class of scanner. So we can now say keyboard next line you see next line is a behavior from the scanner class okay 
So the object can take behavior from the class, okay? Or the object can also store data, okay? See, an object can store data. We can say keyboard equal to um, string. String is a class, right? String Hector or string name equal to Hector. So that name object can store data as, and the data it store in this situation is Hector, right? The next is an object can also perform an operation, okay? Like I told you, keyboard dot, next line, you see? So it needs, it will accept string input from the user. The data stored in an object are commonly called attributes or fields, okay? Um, the operations that an object can perform, the operation, you see, they are called method, okay? Operation, so get this and do this, next line, blah, 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 dot this. Those are called methods. I hope you can understand the difference between class, object, and method. I can ask you in an exam, what is the difference between a class, an object, or a method, okay? So let us look at more example. You see, strings as object. A primitive data type can only store data. It has no other inbuilt capabilities. When we say primitive data type, we are talking about the int, the double, the float, the byte, the short, the, you see, those are primitive data types. So when I say int h equal to, so when I say int, age is equal to, you see, this is a primitive data type. I can use double. I can use um, all the primitive data type, okay? These are primitive data type. Age is equal to, um, two or 24, you see? Primitive data type can only store data. So this kind of primitive data type can only store data. So age now is equal to 24. You store this data, okay? An object can store data and perform operations on that data, okay? In addition to storing strings, string objects have numerous methods that perform operations on the strings they hold, you see? There's the difference between string and primitive data type. Let's look at some examples. Uh, we learned that a reference variable contains the address of an object. For example, when I say um, string and I call, I call, I, I use string name, okay? Name now is a variable, and this variable is the location, is the name of the location of this address in the memory, okay? So when you, when you want to save a, a variable, so the name of the variable becomes the address or the location where you save that value, okay? So string address. String address, string string address. Address here is the name of the location or the name of the variable where obviously this is the name of the variable and it is also the name of the location in the memory where the value is stored. So what value is stored here? Usually this value can be empty, no. If it's empty, it is no. So usually when you declare like string address and you just put this, you do not assign any value. So it will be null. Null, null means empty. 
There's nothing inside. Null means empty, okay? So string address is the name of the location in the memory where it is saved. So if I now initialize this variable and say, okay, uh, Genjo or Unan. So in this location, in this address, memory location, the value inside the address is Unan or Charleston, okay? So this is how it works. So this is a string object that has a value, Charleston. Now, I can also call on methods of the string object, okay? Like I can say, the length method of the string returns the integer value that is equal to the length of the string, okay? So when I say int string length, this can be any name, okay? This is programmer defined. So I now say city name dot length or address in this location, I use this address dot length address.length, it will return, it will count the value of the address. Maybe Hunan, one, two, three, four, five, six. It will count the length of Hunan and return the integer value, one, two, three, four, five. It will now return in strength equal to five because you, are, you want to know the length. Okay, this is method of, um, of the object, okay? The variable string length will contain, in the case of Charleston, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. See, 10. It will return 10 after this statement since the string Charleston has 10 characters. You see, primitive, cannot have method that can be returned, whereas objects can, okay? If you remember in our Java, when you see int, when you see public, all those keywords, they are usually in blue. Well, primitive data types are in black, um, objects are in black, or variables or, you know, normal text. Text. So objects can have methods. Primitive data type cannot have method, okay? Another example was when we did the scanner, scanner class, right? We can do um, we can do keyboard.land, keyboard.this, keyboard.next int, keyboard. All of these are methods. You are calling methods, okay, to do something. So Let's look at more into details. Many objects can be created from a class and each object is independent of the others, okay? This is a blueprint that describes a house, okay? Living room. Okay, so this is, for example, a blueprint from a house, okay? You can create one object from this house. You can create another object from this house. You can also create another object of this house, from this house, okay? But it does not mean that all of this house, all of these objects are the same, okay? It does not mean that all of these objects are the same. It can, it can all be different objects, okay? Now, the person variable. I say string, 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 person, string, person, equal to Jenny. See, in, in quote, Jenny, string person equal to Jenny. So person here is the memory address or the name of the variable. Variable name and memory address. That is the location in the memory 
where the value journey is stored. So if I'm looking for journey now in my memory, I need to find the location where journey is saved. And the name of the location is, is what I have named this person. Okay, so person is the name in the, in the memory, memory address, okay? The variable, the person variable holds the address of a string object called journey, okay? Now, the pet variable, I can also say string pet, okay? Fido is the name of the pet, or string favorite color, and I say blue, okay? So these are three variables referencing three string objects. Now, each instance of a string class contains different data, okay? The instances are all, they are all shared the same design, okay? Each instance has all the attributes and methods that were defined in the string class. Okay, what does this sentence mean? Each instance has all of the attributes and methods that were defined in the string class. Now, let me give you an example. Uh, name, class, okay, M-I-S, Two zero one zero three is a class, okay? Everybody in this class must have a name, ID number, student ID, address, age, blah, 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 many, many attributes. Now, method, go class. This is one method. Another method, write exam. Another method. Do homework. Do homework. This is another method. Another method. Um, what else do students do? Write exam, do homework, go to class. Um, go to library, go library. Okay, these are what everybody in this class must do. Now, if I String student. Uh, let me not use student. For example, I declare Doris. Doris is a student, is an object. 
and this Doris is an object and a member of this class. Okay, so I can do Doris dot go class. Dot write exam. of this class. I can also do Doris dot do homework, Doris dot String Jessica, okay? Or string student equal to Jessica. And I can also have Jessica dot, I can have um, instances or method, Jessica dot go class, Jessica dot write exam, Jessica dot do homework. This is what this, sentence is saying each instance. So every time I declare string, okay? So in this case now, this will not be string because this string is a different class. This will now be MIS20103 student equal to Doris or MIS20103 Doris, okay? Now, this MIS is a class, and Doris is an object of this class. So, Doris.go class, Doris.write exam. Same here. This will no longer be string. This will now be MIS 102013 uh, Jessica, because Jessica is now an object of, okay? Because when you say string, name name is now a variable or an object of this string class, okay? And the string class is just like this. It have many, many, many methods that any string you call, all of them classes, each instance has all the attributes, okay? So Doris have all the attributes. Doris must have a name. Doris must have an ID, Doris must have an age, Doris must have an address. All of them must have the same attributes. The, each instance has all the attributes and all the method. The same Doris will also go to class, write exam, 
do homework. The same as Jessica. Jessica need to go to class, write exam, do homework, go to library. Even though Doris and Jessica are two different objects, but they all have the same attributes and method of the MIS 20103 class. Do you understand? Very good. So this is how you use classes, objects, method, okay? So this is a class. This is an object. This is a method. All of these are method, okay? Jessica dot this are all method, okay? So let's look. Okay, a classes are defined or, repre or rep uh, to represent a single concept or service. Okay, so just like MIS, this is a single concept, a single service for this class. Okay, MIS 2013 uh, class is different from, let's say another class, family class, a class of family. So father, mother, um, children, okay, live together, maybe the method are uh, live. So one class must have one concept, one single concept or one single job or one single objective. Okay, you cannot create a class that does not have relationship with each other. Okay, where the methods are, uh, you get what I'm trying to say, one single concept. So now let's look at what are called access modifiers. Access. Please check your I do for the meaning of access, Chinese word for access. Okay. So if you look at my phone, okay, I can open my phone with my thumbprint. When I put my thumbprint, my phone will open, which means I have access to my phone. Okay. And I must use my thumb to open it. If I use another thumb or somebody else, try to open this phone, it will not open, right? It will not open, it will, it will get locked, which means no access, denied access, okay? Only my thumb can open the phone, okay? So, which means I have access to my phone. Other people don't have access. Maybe I can use my facial recognition or my thumbprint or my voice or my password then I have access to the phone, okay? But if I don't put password, if I don't lock my phone, if I don't put any security, then anybody can use it, okay? This is what it means for access modifiers for a class, okay? So every class, for example, you see this class, okay? This is a public class. Okay, why do I say public class? It is public because all of you are members of this class. Okay, and all of you can be member of this class All you can be member of this class by registering at the same time with each other and you are all automatically members of this class. Okay, for example, Jessica, what is your surname? What is your family name, Jessica? Jessica, what is your family name? Can you type? What is your family name? Ni hao, ni hao, ni hao. Can you respond? What is your family name? For example, um, Jessica's name is um, Jessica. Um, Sing. 
maybe i don't know jessica saying this is her family name okay so saying family uh sing family now this family can be um MIS can be a public class, but this family, we can name it a um, private or protected class. So if it is private class, Doris cannot simply be a member of this class of same family, okay? It is only for special people, only for the family, it's protected, it is, or it is private, it is not public. Okay, so if you make something public, everybody can access it, all right? Doris can access this class, Jessica can access this class, um, Craig can access this class, everybody can access the class, okay? Every object that have the class name can access the class, but Doris now cannot access the Sing family class because it is a private class. It is a personal or family, or it's a private or protected, class cannot be accessed by every object, okay? This is the difference between these access modifiers. A class can be public or private or protected, okay? If a class is public, everybody can access it. If it's private, it's not everyone that can access it. And if it's protected, the same thing, okay? So let us look at the description. What is it saying? These access modifiers state that any other class can access the resources. Okay, any other class can access the resources. Um, so now let's look at, for example, we now have um, another class, MIS 20102, for example. So now I have this object and maybe I do not want to I do not want to start to create all these method and all these attributes again from, the, from scratch, okay? I can just inherit and say, okay, um, I get, get, um, get attributes, get the attributes, attribute and method from MIS, two, zero, one, zero, three, okay? So I can just get the details or the information of this class directly without creating a new one, okay? So every member of this class, every member of this class now can also, maybe these people now, there is a Jenny, there is a, there's a Tom, okay? This object in from this class, can access these details because this is a public class. So therefore this class can also get the details of this class because it's public. But if it's private, then no other class can access it. A private class, this access modifier indicates that only data within this class can access the resources of this class. Now let's go back to our example. We created a sync uh, Jessica Singh, okay? Maybe Jessica have um, other sisters. Example, her sister's name is um, Betty. Uh, Betty. And she have another sister whose name is um, Didia. And she have a brother whose name is um, Brian. Okay, so these people are objects from Singh family. They are members of Singh family, so they can get all the information that is inside the Singh family attributes and behavior. Okay, but. Jessica, um, Doris, for example, Doris is a member of this class. So this class cannot get access to sing family method or 
because Singh family is private. It is not public, okay? So even MIS 10112, if they want to get Singh family details, no, they cannot, it is private. Only people inside the object can get, inside the class, can get the details. Members of another class cannot get the information from that class. So this access modifier indicates that only data within this class can access the resources, okay? Public, this access modifier states that any other class can access the resources from that particular class. You look at, ooh, time is gone, okay? After I explain protected, we go for break, okay? Five minutes break. Protected, this modifier indicates that only classes in the current package or a class lower in hierarchy can access these resources, okay? So when they say it's similar to private, okay, only the members of that um, class can access it or a class lower in hierarchy. So what do they mean by lower in hierarchy? So for example, now, Jessica Singh is a member of Singh family. Now, Jessica now got married and have her own family. So family of Jessica with beautiful, beautiful kids, and beautiful husband or whatever. Now, this family of Jessica is a child from this parent family, Singh family. So she can get the resources from here, okay? Because Singh family is protected. So Jessica is a child class from this parent class. She can get the resources from this parent class because she is lower in hierarchy, but in the same line, okay? So protected works like that, all right? So we'll take five minutes break. And when we come back, we'll continue with the class. See you guys in five minutes.
So I say she comes to school. If not come to school, <laughs> you refuse to come to school. Now nah, see what we're doing. Are you smart? Are you smart? Thank mm -hmm. you.
Okay, guys. Can we continue? Can we continue? Okay. So access modifiers, we've talked about this. So you remember, we spoke about this in the last class. If there are more than one class in a file, only one may be public and it must match the file name. Class headers have the format access modifiers. What are access modifiers? Okay, remember access modifiers. These are access modifiers. Okay, it will tell you how the, the, the fields inside the class can be accessed. So this can be either public or private or restricted. Okay, then class. What kind of class is it and what is the name? Okay, and then members. Usually it will start with open curly braces, beginning of the class and end of the class. Okay, so everybody inside here are the class members. All right. So when designing a class, decisions about the following must be made. If you want to design a class, you must think about a few things, okay, and make decisions, okay? What data must be accounted for? What actions must be performed? Okay, what data must be accounted for? Which means, what is the attribute? What data must be accounted for or the attributes? Which can be name, ID number, address, what are the data that must be accounted for? Then the next is what actions need to be performed? What are the methods that needs to be done by the class? You must define it. So go class, write exam, do homework. These are the actions that must be performed. So you must also think about that. What data can be modified, okay? Um, for example, um, Let's say final grades, grades, uh, why? Grades, okay? So your grade, everybody can, will have grades, but this grade can be modified, right? Based on your performance, okay? So you need to know, uh, okay, what are the, uh, what are, what data, needs to be modified okay your grades needs to be okay set grade to be equal to a or b or c depending on how you perform in the go class write exam and blah 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 so what data needs to be accessed okay so for example you see here all of this method also they can be public or private method Okay, because other classes can access this. So sometimes you want some method to be private. Even though this class is public, sometimes some method also can be private. For example, grid. Okay, so even though you can, everybody can share this information, but this grid is private. Okay, it's personal. So other classes may not be able to access the grid of this object. Okay. 
So you can, this is called encapsulation, okay? Hiding a particular information from other classes. But we will get to that in the next few slides, okay? So, so what data can be accessed and what data should not be accessed? You need to decide, decide that. So any rules as to how the data should be modified, you also need to decide that. Then you, if you know all this information, then you can create your class. Class design typically is done with the aid of unified modeling language, UML diagram. Okay, so um, a UML class diagram, I think you have, I think, okay, you will do that in next semester because you are 2020 students. So when you start doing courses like system analysis and design, you will definitely do class diagram. When you start doing courses like uh, project management, software project management in your next, next year, you will do class diagram, okay? So a UML class diagram is a graphical tool that can help you to design a Java class, okay? The diagram has three main sections. This is what I have just drawn here. Class name, attribute, method. Same here. Class name, this is the name. Attributes, this is the attributes. Method, this is the method. It has three main parts. Okay, the name, the attributes, okay, name, da, 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 and the methods. So UML diagrams are easily converted to Java class files. There will be more about UML diagram in, in, in diagrams a little later. So uh, the class name should concisely reflect what the class represents, okay? So what about attributes? Attribute is the data element of a class. Of a class define the object to be installed, instantiated from the class. The attribute must be specific to the class and define it completely. Example, a rectangle is defined by, when you have a rectangle, what are the attributes of this rectangle? The first attribute, why is my mouse like this? The first attribute is the breadth. And the next attribute is the length. This is the most important two details of a, of an, of a rectangle, length and breadth or width. For a man, for example, what are the main attributes for a man, a human being? Their name, their age, their sex, their race or nationality or their, so these are all attributes. So these attributes must be specific to a class and define it completely. So these attributes define this person, okay? So you cannot have um, name, age, sex for a rectangle. Right? It's stupid. Okay? But you can have, and you cannot have length times breadth. You cannot have length times breadth for this object uh, for a person, okay? It does not define this person, all right? Um, let's proceed. The attributes are then accessed by the method within the class. So depending on what it is you want to do, the attribute is accessed by the method within the class. So data hiding, data hiding is what I talked about earlier. It's another aspect of encapsulation. 
is a concept of hiding data. Like when I say grades, right? You don't want other people to access other people's grades. So you can make this a, a, a private method, okay? So classes should not only be self-contained, but they should be self-governing. Okay, classes use private access modifiers on fields to hide them from other classes. Classes need method to access, to allow access and modify and modification of the class data. Making a class private or making a method private or making a class public or a method public. Okay, so a method, the class methods define the action that an instance of the class can perform. Okay, this is an example of a method header. It has the format access modifier is a private, public, protected, or what? Return type. How does it return? Method name and parameters. So like in Java, we do public static void main, right? And then parameter string ARGS, public static void main. And here we'll have string as the parameters. Can send it. public static void main, and then you have the string parameters, okay? Um, and then obviously you will now have your method body. So you see inside the class, you have a class, then the class will have a class body. Inside the class, you have methods. This is a method. Then the method will also have its own body, open and close, okay? Now, methods, the attributes of a class might need to be changed, accessed, or calculated, all right? Sometimes, um, like when I say string, okay, let's not use string. Let me give you a simple example that will give you a um, clear understanding object. Rectangle. Object rectangle. Now, an object rectangle, what are the two um, attributes of the object, right? It is length. Uh, sorry about that. And it is width. Okay, when you have rectangle, this is the width, this is the length, right? So um, this is the two main. So this attribute, you can either change it or set it or calculate it. So you also have area. Area is the calculated attributes. So a rectangle will have three information, either the length, the width, or the area. So um, you can say set, set length, set length, 
to be equal to five, for example, and set width set width to be equal to 10. You see, here I am setting the value of length and width to be five and 10, okay? So I am changing the value, okay? I can also say get length later. You see, I can call this value uh, or get width because I want to get the information, right? get width, and this is accessing. I want to get the information, okay? Now, I can also calculate the area, which is area is equal to length times width, or calculated, okay? Method, the attribute of a class might need to have one of these three um behaviors okay you can either get the information access the information or you can change the information or you can calculate the information inside that um attributes do you understand okay you can either change access or calculate so the method can change methods that change and access attributes are called accessors, see, accessors. This is for changing and accessing. You call it accessors. So if I ask you, method that change or get value for uh, or access attributes are called accessors, true or false? You must say true. Methods that change, you can change the, you can check for the word mutate in Chinese, please. Mutate. Mutate. It's like this. Caterpillars with small, 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 small legs that eat vegetable. After some times they mutate and they become and they become butterfly. This is mutation. Okay, this insect change and become this insect. It is changing, mutate, right? This is the English word for mutate. So methods that Methods that access, okay, or change, they are called mutators, and for accessing, they are called accessors, okay? So just know the concept, okay? Because of a concept of hiding, um, of data hiding, fields in a class are private, okay? Now, the methods that retrieve or get or access data from field are called accessors. This is what I just explained accessors and the method that modify change or set the value are called mutators because they change the value okay they are called mutators so each field that the programmer wishes to view by other classes need an accessor accessor okay you need an accessor each field of a programmer wishes to be modified by other programmers needs a mutator so each field that wishes to be modified, okay, like the length or the width, you want to modify it, like set, like here, I said set length. So now I want to set length to be five, but maybe I change my mind. I want to set it now to be 15 and this one to be 100. You see, I can change the value by the programmer. The programmer can change the value or set the value. So you need what is called set length. Now this set length method is called mutator. A mutator um, is called a mutator, see? To modify data fields are called mutators. And if I just want to get 
the information, just get it. They are called accessors. Each field the programmer wishes to modify, you need a mutator. Now for a rectangle, for example, this is what I just explained. The accessors and mutators are public uh, set length. Set length sets the value of the length of the field. So set length, public, you see, now I'm making this value, this to be public. So members of other class can access this method. Void, this is the return type. So it, the, uh, the default, um, the default um, for any value, usually it can be void, void or null. Null means empty or void, okay? So it is empty, that is why you can set the value. Set length, okay? So this is a mutator to be, then you put the double length. What is the value, okay? Set width, set the value of the width, okay? Now, this is for accessors. Get length, return the value of the length, or uh, public double, get, uh, So this is set length, set width. This is get length, get width, okay? So you get the value, public double, get length, public double, get width, okay? So sometimes people also put it, call them, instead of accessors or mutators, people also call them getters and setters, okay? Different programmers have different names for it. So when you hear getters or setters or accessors or mutators, they mean the same thing, all right? Then you have the stale data. Some data is the result of calculation. They are stale data, all right? Like when I said area, do you remember area? It is this times this. When you multiply this times this, it will give you the area of the rectangle. Okay, so this is a stale data. Some data is the result of calculation. So consider the area of a rectangle, length times width, okay? It will be impractical to use the area variable here, all right? So data that require the calculation of various factors has potential to become stale data. So avoid stale data. It is best to calculate the value of that within the method rather than store it in a variable, all right? Rather than use an area variable in a rectangle class, public double get area. And then you say return width time. This is dynamically calculates the value of the rectangle's area when the method is called. Now, any change in the length or the width will not leave the area of the rectangle still, okay? So it is better for you to do area like this because when you set length and set width, then automatically when you call public double get area, it will use the value that you have set, okay? But if you now say area, uh, maybe double area, equal to 50, okay? What if now the programmer now say set length to be five and set width to be 10 uh, or, or five also? Set length to be five and set width to be five, which means this area will no longer be 50. It will be five times five will be 25. So you have made this calculated area stale. This is what they call stale, stale data. So to avoid stale data, it is best to calculate the value of that data within a method rather than store it as a variable. So it's better to do it like this than to do it like this, okay? If the value will be changing. So this is dynamically da, 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 da. Now, any change in the length and the width of the variable will not leave the rectangle still. So anytime you change the length and the width, it will also change the 
value when you call this um, this thing, okay? So this, I have already given you a similar example of, so when you see a, a UML data type and parameter notation, okay? The UML diagrams are called a language independent, okay? UML diagrams use an independent notation to show return types, access modifiers, and, excuse me, etc. Et cetera. So example, rectangle, okay? So you have the width, you have the length, you have the whatever you have, okay? And then you have the public, usually you use plus sign, uh, private, you use negative sign, or protected, you use the hash sign, okay? And then set width, this is a method. This is an attribute. This is a name. Class name, class attributes, class method. All right. So, um, UML diagrams are language independent. Okay. So, when you learn UML diagram, UML diagram is UML diagram in every language, whether you're learning Java or learning F or learning C++ or learning Visual Basic or learning UML diagram is UML diagram, okay? It is language independent, okay? UML diagram use an independent notation to show return types, okay? So width double because your width can be in the form of 15.5. So you cannot say integer and then you cannot have this. So it has to be double, right? With length or what, what, what. So you use colon to denote the return type, all right? Set with width double and void, okay? Return types are placed after the method declaration name separated by a column. Okay, so we we'll look at the UML diagrams. I've explained this. Okay, so basically, if you see here, class header, open bracket, attributes, and method. Okay, that is basically what is contained inside a Java class. All right, I showed you an example of a Java class in the last program. So if you look at this, this example I gave to you here, it is the same. So public class, MIS, this, then the class will open with curly braces. And then you have your attributes and method inside and they finally, the class will close with, with curly braces. So everything within here is part of this class from here to here is part of this class. Anything outside here is no longer part of the class. Okay, so this is what this slide is saying. Putting all this information together, a Java class file can be built easily using UML diagram. So this is the last slide we will do for today. Okay. I will try and explain what this means. And after this, then we end the class, all right? So once the class structure has been tested, the method bodies can be written and also tested, okay? Rectangle, this is class name, class attribute, width, double, double, length, double. So what are the method? Set width, double, void. Set length, double, void. Get width, double. Get area, double. Okay, so you can call these mutators.
because it changes the value of this. You can call these accessors because it gets the value of that attribute, okay? Get width, get top. So because you see here is void, you want it to be void because it is mostly empty. Before you set anything, it is empty. So when you set the value, then it's no longer empty. So get width, you don't want to get an empty information, right? So you cannot use void anymore. You want to get the exact value, okay? Get area, get area now. Well, it will also have its own method, okay? So these are the attributes that are done in this rectangle class. Now, class name in Java, this is how you write, you convert this, okay? So usually when you want to write a Java class, make sure you know all this information first in your mind or you've written it somewhere, or you've drawn it in a software, or you, okay? Then you can start creating your value, okay? Then you have your attributes, private double width, private double length. So this is private because only members of this class. So everything in here are members of this class. Everything inside this rectangle are members of this class. You can get this. So anything outside of this rectangle cannot get this information. Okay. So now you now have public void set width, which is the first one. Public void set width. Width is equal to, you already said double here, so you don't need double here anymore. Width equal to W. Then you now have the next one, set length. See, public void, set length, double length. Length equal to length. The next one, public void, get width. So equal to return width because you want to return the value. The same thing, return length, public double, return area now. So this one is calculated, right? So return length times width, okay? So this is how you convert a UML diagram to a Um, to a Java, Java source code, okay? So if we had to do something similar, for this now, okay? So if we are to create, um, for this. So you need to know what your, your, mm, what your Java class can do, okay? So that you can be able to create your, your UML uh, diagrams or create your Java file, okay? So we'll be looking at a number of examples when we move forward in the future, hands on, okay? But now, I don't think we can go too deep into the uh, course yet, because first of all, you need to start doing your practice classes. And let me see your timetable, uh, 2013, theory, theory, practice. So next week you have your practice lab.
Shida, next week you have your practice lab. So in that practice lab, you will do all the exercises, some of the exercises we have done in the class. Okay, so if you have installed your NetBean, you can try and do those exercises on your own. If you can, if you cannot, it's okay. We will do it together, some of them. Um, so basically in the lab, we'll do basic um, system.out.print. Okay, um, basic um, scanner object, okay, input output with um, using Java, okay? So you can get inputs, you can set this, you can do this, and then syntax. Can you be able to identify the error in a code and fix it? So those are the things we'll be looking at in our next class, okay? So um, I remember what I told you in the last class, Java, programming, even though all of you, there are many of you in this class, okay? But your programming skill at the end of the class will be different. Why? Because Java is a kind of course that needs a lot of practice, okay? So you must practice, you must practice a lot as a, especially all of you are IT, computer science students. So computer science students must know how to program, do some programming, okay? So you must practice programming a lot. You must practice, practice, practice. You must practice from the class, on your own, from the internet, just keep doing practice. Everything you learn in class, try to practice many exercises, do some examples, exercise, many, many, just keep practicing. The more you practice, the more you memorize syntax or you memorize code or you memorize and the better you will become as a programmer, okay? So if you practice more, your knowledge in programming will grow more. If you don't practice, okay? So it is just like that. In Dong Lama, in Dong Lama, Hello, Michal. Any question? Okay, okay, oh. Okay, okay, oh. All right. Okay, we will end the class here. Shesheni, Saijin, see you guys next week. All right, bye-bye. Happy holidays.